The patrons have spoken and they've given us artillery. This sleeper favorite from Generation 2 has quite an interesting design whose origin we would have loved to be in the room for. Because as far as we can tell, someone had the idea to make an octopus that was also a bazooka. And then either that person or someone else loved that idea so much that they gave that Pokemon its own signature move called, you guessed it, Octazooka. In the anime, Octillery's had a few notable episode appearances. While those who played Pokemon Coliseum could use it in their playthrough if they exercised enough care to avoid knocking out its pre-evolution, the low-level Shadow Remoraid. Today, we're going to examine if Octazooka fired its laser with the precision necessary to find success in the competitive scene, or if this oceanic artillery plummeted haplessly to the depths. And so, we ask, how good was Octillery actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. It took Octillery a while to establish itself in its debut generation, even all the way down in NU. The metagame was so absurdly dominated by the likes of Raichu and Polyrath that Octillery had a difficult time fitting in. However, once those two were banned, Octillery finally rose to the top of the metagame, becoming one of the most dangerous offensive threats in the new metagame. Its special attack was the highest in the tier, and was put to good use with the external excellence of Stab Surf, complemented perfectly by coverage from either Hidden Power Electric or Ice Beam to hit common water resist. The the former slammed Dugong, Kingler, and what else but opposing Octillery, while the latter crushed Dragonair, Gloom, and Execute. These worked so well together that Octillery was able to run an effective rest talk set for longevity in the face of attacks and status alike without losing offensive potency while asleep. And if it ran Ice Beam, it was guaranteed a good sleep talk against Zatu and Dugtrio too. Octillery didn't even need to run one of the most unique moves for a water type that it had access to, Flamethrower, as the super effective hits it scored were largely redundant with Ice Beam and its range of super effective hits was smaller as well, while not offering the extra power of Fire Blast, which for some reason Octillery wouldn't learn that until the next generation. As if it had, it likely would have found some use for it. Anyway, Octillery's initial burst of popularity came to a halt upon the discovery of Chen Chao, which walled it hard. However, being walled by one Pokemon does not invalidate viability. The Octillery user could create win-win scenarios by partnering Octillery with Pokemon that took advantage of Chen Chao's presence, like Execute and Gloom, and thus Octillery's uses returned to its rightfully high place. It became a top 5 Pokemon within the tier and was incredibly easy to slap on a vast majority of teams. In addition to its offensive threat level, Octillery also had various defensive usage. It was an effective check to the likes of Dugtrio, Zatu, Rapidash, Flareon, Ninetales, and Pseudo-Woodle, and the tier's general dearth of grass and electric type moves meant it wasn't being hit super effectively much either, and Octillery's bulk, while not amazing, was good enough given GSC's maxed out stats and the low power level of NU, meaning it was able to take neutral hits quite well. At the expense of some of this defensive utility, Octillery could also experiment with more aggressive sets that made it even more difficult to handle. Instead of choosing between Ice Beam and Hidden Power Electric, it run both. As if this extra coverage wasn't enough, it would round out the set with Thief, removing leftovers from an opposing wall and making itself even tougher to switch into. So all in all, Octillery was excellent no matter what it did and was a defining Pokemon in GSC NU. The splitting of EVs in Generation 3 meant Octillery's fierce offensive output hit most Pokemon even harder. Now of course this came with the drawback of Octillery's own meager defenses not being maxed out, compromising its own hit taking ability, which wasn't great considering its low speed. However, it returned to NU and there the power level was once again low enough for Octillery to not just survive, but thrive. It was a hugely defining offensive threat capable of blasting through nearly the entire tier, and what few Pokemon could withstand its hits, like Dugong and Bulky Warlord, weren't exactly immovable for Octillery's hidden power electric, especially with spike support. Speaking of Warlord, Warlord was the best, most defining offensive water type in NU as well. Was Octillery not outclassed? No, not even a little bit. Warlord would have killed for several of Octillery's offensive traits, namely a much higher special attack stat and a much stronger option than Ice Beam for hitting grass types like Blossom and Fire Blast. Octillery also packed the always excellent Thunder Wave, which supported its teammate and helped Octillery overcome its low speed. Finally, Octillery was also one of the tier's best leads. Its Glalie KOing Fire Blast was an incredible tool, meaning the opponent would instantly lose a Pokemon if they wanted an early spike, which they'd be limited to just one layer of at that. Octillery didn't necessarily even have to compete with Wailord. They were both so good many players used them on the same team, and to fantastic results, with many opposing teams unable to handle the dual water assault. Additionally, Octillery was also a fixture on Baton Pass teams, as its huge special attack and perfect coverage made it the ideal cleanup Pokemon to take advantage of a Baton 
patch chain. Phasing was incredibly rare in NU, so Artillery didn't even need to use its new Suction Cups ability most of the time, which would stop any attempts to roar or whirlwind from the opponent. BP's presence in NU was largely reviled by the player base, not just because of Artillery, since it was mostly the fact that other Pokemon were unstoppable and passing boosts back and forth between each other that really made them too much to handle for many teams. However, Octillery certainly played its own significant part because it was ruthlessly efficient in ensuring the win. It was the perfect recipient. Once it got its boost, the game was over. No questions asked. BP was never banned though, despite the requests of some players. But of course, as established beforehand, Octillery was far more than just a BP recipient, and as a standalone Pokemon, it was a thoroughly excellent, defining part of Gen 3 NU. Generation 4's massive power creep wasn't just new Pokemon, it was new boosting items like Life Orb and Choice Specs as well as higher base power moves. Plus, the new Pokemon meant that the lower tiers were now far, far stronger than they were before. This meant that Octillery could no longer hyper-efficiently prey on the lower power level in NU anymore. Nope, now its combination of average to mediocre bulk and poor speed was fully, easily exploitable. But it wasn't even that it was a bad Pokemon outright. Niche, sure, but there's nothing wrong with being niche. The problem was that Octillery's niche was far too specific, and this was because it was entirely outclassed as a standalone Pokemon by the bevy of excellent offensive water types in the tier. Float Soul, Sharpedo, Polyrath, and even the more offbeat choices like Golurk, even the mostly defensive Slowking was a better offensive choice than Octillery because of its far superior bulk and instant recovery allowed it infinitely more opportunities to actually use its offenses. Now, under certain circumstances, Octillery did shine in ways no other waters really could. This of course meant its usage would be quite low, tethered as it was to its specificity, but it also had unique boons. This was most notable on Trick Room teams, which turned Octillery's greatest weakness into a weapon. Suddenly, the opponent was hard-pressed to stave off the dearth Octillery rained down upon them, ripping through opponents with the insane power of Water Spout, boosted further by Choice Specs or Splash Plate. Trick Room teams were rare, but potentially devastating, and Octillery was a staple on them. And beyond Trick Room, Octillery was also a staple on Baton Pass stuff once again, sometimes even venturing into Yu Yu but this was ultimately too gimmicky and unreliable. Octillery's Generation 4 was a largely uneventful one, but on the few occasions it did appear, it was basically the Kyogre of Enyu, water spouting off and blasting through nearly everything. Generation 5's Dream World blessed Octillery with perhaps the most unholy ability in the game, Moody. Lowering a random stat by one each turn isn't great, but it's far outweighed by the plus two boost provided to another stat on that turn. And when you spam Substitute and Protect, you're eventually going to pile up on boost to a game-breaking extent. Moody was such an obscenely broken Pokemon that Bidoof of all Pokemon was sweeping teams in Ubers, so it's not much of a stretch to imagine what this ability did on actually decent Pokemon like Octillery. In Indeed, Octillery was one of the ability's more reliable abusers thanks to its innately useful water typing, and most if not all Moody teams utilized it for a short time it was allowed in OU. It didn't stop there though. Octillery and its Moody friends were also tearing teams up in Ubers, and the ability was banned from there as well. From a three-time NUer to being banned from both OU and Ubers, well, it was more the ability that broke literal Bidoof, but it was still nice to see Octillery tearing through the likes of Arceus. Sadly, Octillery was not at all useful past this early stage of Generation 5. At least it had finally been granted Hydro Pump, which its move pool had previously mysteriously missed, but that wasn't enough to make up for the fact that it was completely and utterly outclassed as a standalone Pokemon, since it was receiving no new tools to seriously distinguish itself from the rest of an increasingly competitive pack. Well, no new tools that didn't break the game at least. Artillery did see some use on Smash Pass teams. It was theoretically a perfect recipient with its great special attack, perfect coverage, and ability to deny Roar and Whirlwind. However, the problem was that even with doubled speed, Octillery Artillery was painfully slow, and would often fail to complete a sweep against offensive teams, thus defeating the point of Smash Passing in the first place. Plus, Smash Pass was eventually axed from the lower tiers for its uncompetitive nature, and Artillery went back to not being able to do anything of substance in NU. It eventually fell to the desolate rank of Untiered. Many of the Moody Pokemon were like that. They occupied a place both beyond Ubers and beyond the lowest tier. No wonder the original translation from Japanese for the ability was inconsistent. And so Artillery's Generation 5 possessed both the highest highs and the lowest lows. 
Generation 6 introduced the new sub NU tier, PU. But at this point, it was too little too late, especially as Octillery didn't receive any of the notable buffs it needed to keep up with the competition, even all the way down in this new lowest of tiers. Octillery wasn't bad, but using it was just needlessly making things harder on oneself, sure. Octillery could be threatening, but it was rarely going to be more of an offensive threat than the tier's incredibly consistent staples of water type offense, usually the metagame defining float soul, but also notably Simapore and Politoed. If you were using a trick room or more likely a sticky web team then yes you'd want artillery on your team but most of the time you weren't going to be using those styles because they were gimmicky and unreliable seeing as artillery's only viability was on styles that were rare to begin with it should come as no surprise that it had nearly no usage and dropped to untiered once again once again, Octillery received nothing in the way of necessary buffs in Generation 7. Thus, it dropped past PU, and nobody sparing it a glance upon seeing how completely outclassed it was by every single water type there, and found itself an untiered Pokemon once again. There really isn't much else to say about it, so instead we will propose some reasonable ways to buff Octillery. First of all, if you attach a splash plate, it fuses with the sacred ancient text inscribed on the plate, and ascends to a higher form of a celestial being, akin to an incomprehensible Lovecraftian monster. Just kidding, but some form of evolution or regional form or mega evolution would obviously be a big step up for Octillery. Make it stronger and bulkier. Even just a relevant stat buff would do. Another option is to give it a unique ability that it would actually make use of. For example, real world octopuses regenerate lost limbs, so it's actually quite bizarre that Octillery doesn't get regenerator. Finally, it's a shame that Octazooka is not a very good move because its name is so cool. Maybe if you make it as strong as the name implies, akin to something like Boom Burst, then that would help out as well. None of these would exactly break Octillery artillery either. Your move, Game Freak. In the earliest stages of Gen 8 PU, the dex cut finally made artillery usable. But really, just that, usable. It was at least acknowledged early on, but quickly forgotten as the tier came into a more comprehensive form, which even the smaller Pokedex included artillery being outclassed by water types that were either fast or bulky. Artillery was neither, and that is a death sentence. Obviously, when the Pokedex expanded with the DLCs, artillery stood no chance. It really didn't receive anything, not even a slightest relevant move pull addition like knockoff or something. For some reason, it didn't even learn flip turn. Hopefully this will be amended in some form in Generation 9. Justice for Octillery. It deserves better. And that's it. So how good was Octillery actually? Well, its stats let it down just barely. It's almost got the makings of a great lower tier Pokemon, but it's not quite there. It was good in Gen 2 and 3 NU, but ever since Gen 4, it struggled to make a name for itself in even the lowest tier. Well, apart from that brief but hilarious stint with Moody, which saw it cleave through even Ubers. Sadly, Gen 4 marked the period where Octillery was generally relegated to highly specific use on niche team styles like Trick Room. Its reoccurring theme was, it could be threatening, but never was consistent enough to justify regular use. Hopefully, Game Freak gives it a slight boost it needs, including the Octazooka buff we all want. Thanks for watching everyone, and thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and for voting for this Pokemon for this month's patron pick. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and in the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Octillery? Aside from buffing Octazooka, how else would you buff it? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments, and follow my crew on these social media platforms, and that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.